it seems to me we can no longer criticise the people who send the ones we love to their death. I know it may sound a bit hyperbolic, but when you actually read this article you'll find out why. Boy dies in mum's care, caught Jell's dad for criticising the judge who gave her custody. You're hearing that right. A boy died in the mum's custody and they jailed, they jailed the dad for criticising the judge. This, a Michigan man is in jail after making social media posts blaming a judge for the death of his son. In September 2017, Jonathan van der Hagen's two-year-old son, Killian, passed away while in the care of his mother. Van der Hagen had previously lost a legal battle in which he petitioned for sole custody of the child, citing unfitness of Killian's mother. Police found there was no evidence of Killian's mother respons was responsible for his death. Van der Hagen does not agree. Following his son's death, the greeting dad made several posts on social media criticising Rachel Rans uh, Rancilio, the uh, Macombo Court County judge who handled his case. One post read, Time to speak up about my personal experience of the corruption of the Macomb County uh, FOC. I think that's family court or something. I don't know American acronyms. The shady game, uh, Judge Rachel Rancidio and Mary Duras, 14 year old threat of FOC, played with the life of my son. According to ABC affiliate XYZ, WXYZ, Rancidio contacted authorities after she said that saw the post and felt threatened. Investigations from the Morecambe County, uh, the Macomb County Sheriff's Office looked into the offending post and found no evidence that Van der Hagen had made any threats, according to court documents. That didn't step, stop officials from charging Van der Hagen with malicious use of tele telecommunications services in July and letting him out on bond, but he continued to criticise Van Sidio on social media after he's released. I mean, anyone would think you're quite right to be able to criticise someone, but apparently not. Uh, Dada back to dig in you, uh, back to dig in and you best believe I'm going to dig up all the skeletons in this court's closet, Van der Hagen wrote in one post. Van der Hagen was jailed after a judge ruled he'd, vi he'd violated the conditions of his bond. His new bond is now $500,000. Deborah Van der Hagen, Jonathan's mother, told WXYZ in an interview aired this week that her son j just wants justice. He don't want to kill anybody, he don't want any anybody physically hurt, he wants them to acknowledge what they have done to get justice, she said. In a reply on Facebook to a friend commenting on his case in July by asking what happened to freedom of speech, Van der Hagen said exactly, the truth hurts, that's what it is, and that's the point. He should be allowed to criticise people under threat of speech, there's no, there's no threats of violence, there's no threat, malicious threats or anything, he's literally just a man who wants justice for the death of his son that he feels the judge calls by uh, by not allowing him custody and by giving her sole custody despite the fact that he feels she was an unfit mother. A jury trial for the misdemeanor offence van der Hagen is charged with is scheduled for mid-September so probably in about a week or so. Some advocates for my, uh, male paternal rights argue that system, uh, systemic injustices against fathers exist in the legal system. We don't argue it. We know it. This proves it. These groups are over time overlap with the controversial MRA movement who members say that feminist and progressive pushes for equality have resulted in systematic abuse, injustice against men and fathers. No, we don't say that feminist and progressive pushes for equality have resulted in systemic injustices. Appeasement of women have resulted in the systemic injustices. There's nothing to... If thing is, this is what we point out, is to say that they say that feminist pushes for equality. If feminists really pushed for equality, shit like this would not happen. If they actually cared about equality like they claim they do, it wouldn't just be for women, it, it should be about everyone else. But no, they actually keep it exclusively to women and anyone who criticises them is controversial. What is exactly controversial about wanting equal rights to women? Especially when it comes to stuff like family cult, 
paternal rights, uh, a saying whether or not we want to be a parent when it comes to obviously saying that women should be forced to sign up for the draft or get rid of the draft completely because it has been deemed unconstitutional to apply it to one gender and not the other. As evidence, they point to cases such as Van der Hagen's and one involving Phoenix attorney Ruby Torres. Yes, I I covered that actually. The Ruby Torres incident. She literally what uh said that a woman could, could get to decide what happens to obviously a fertilized egg. That wasn't in anybody. It was literally just sat in cryostasis from IVF and obviously test tube, whatever you want to call it. The man decided he did not want to do it, but it got turned that she had this final say. In other words, a contract that they wrote... Yeah, here, here it goes. In March, the Arizona Appeals Court ruled that Torres could impregnate herself with embryos she and her ex-husband preserved during their marriage. Despite his objections to the plan, the ex, John Terrell, could have been required to pay child support. So a man who had a contract with his ex that they had to require both of the both of their consent before she could use the uh, the embryos that were developed unless he had both signatures and both agreed no one could do anything with the embryos well a judge overruled that and basically null and voided the contract and said That she, he could do it. That she could do it, and if she got pregnant, he would have to pay child support, despite saying no. It is, of course, true that if Torres was awarded the embryos, Terrell could be legally responsible to financially support the children. The drawing stated, "The reality is the same today as it was then, when the parties executed the in vitro fertilization agreement nearly four years ago." Meanwhile, last month, a Florida man complained that the state was declining to reduce his child support payments even though he had been awarded temporary custody of his son after the boy's mother allegedly overdosed on cocaine while pregnant. So in other words, he now has custody, but he still has to pay her child support for the child he has custody of. While she is in a hospital over an overdose, while she was pregnant. Let's get that through your, let's get through that through your heads for one second and try to muddle through it. A woman Overdose on cocaine while pregnant. He has a child with her, and he now has that child. Obviously, because he has obviously custody of his son, and yet he still has to pay her the same amount of child support as if she would have the custody. And thing is, what's the betting that when she comes out of hospital, the judge judges would have ruled her? sell custody straight back despite her showing right here after allegedly overdosing on cocaine while pregnant with another man's child that obviously she is an unfit mother that is the most clear cut case of being an unfit mother you can clearly see but no the judge more than likely ruled that she would get custody back but the fact that a man has been arrested, charged, and could face jail, or actually was jailed, for simply criticising a judge who gave the mum's boy cust the mum custody of his son that he ended up dead. It is amazing. And then also you have this story here that I noticed just as I was watching it. Or reading through it. You got a man who can't find A shelter to take him and his son. Uh, Paul's stop playing. I hate sites that have automatic play. A Michigan father of five says his family is homeless after his wife left them and he is having trouble finding a shelter that will take men with children. Joseph Cantu told Fox 10 in an interview aired Wednesday that he lost his job as a professional auto body polisher after his wife left last month because he had no one to take care of his children. I never thought this would happen to myself anyway, but what bothers me is the most that it, is that my kids will have to enjoy it as well. 
and luckily enough they're small enough that they probably won't remember it. Losing his home, Cantu and his, his kids have slept inside their family van, pulling inside rest areas at times. Oh for fuck's sake. This stupid sight. No matter how many times you get rid of those things, they always come back. And then there's several nights where some people will donate money here and there so that we can sleep in a motel room. Complicating his already difficult situation is a harsh reality for Michigan dads who find themselves in need of temporary place to live. We're waiting on a placement through a shelter, but unfortunately here in southeast Michigan, there's not many shelters for men with children, he said. Some advocates of male paternal rights argue that systemic injustices against fathers exist in the legal system. Obviously, this is exactly what I just read. Have resulted in culture of discrimination against men in general. And evidence they point to are cases such as Cantu's whose experience isn't unique. And it's not. There are many men who, are, who face this, who they do not who do not have, obviously, places they can go. Uh, as uh, In 2010, HuffPost reported the Attila uh, Strayer, a man, turned away from several shelters in Arizona because he had children with him. Meanwhile, in tw a 2015 blog spot for the website Cornerstone Community Outreach, an organisation that aids homeless people in Chicago, conveyed the struggle enjoyed by many single dads looking for a temporary shelter for their families. Fathers often find it difficult to access shelter space because many shelters are designed for single adults or women with children. Some have tied the problem to traditional societal perspectives on gender in which women are usually seen as primary caretakers or children. And yet, whenever it comes to shared parenting bills, people like the National Organisation for Women block them and deny them and say that it's, it'll be bad for women and say it'll only bolster men who want to abuse their wives. I'm not lying either, that's actually what they say. But no. A 2016 study examined the growing phenomenon of homelessness among single father families. Researcher Tamara Jean Raymond Hill, Jesus Christ, you want a longer name? Noted how several studies show that many homeless family, single fathers face gender related discriminations due in part to the cultural expectations of men and stereotypical notion that men are innately incompetent to raise happy and healthy children. But then you get people like this who say it's basically that we're obviously controversial for pointing this out, but there's a cultural discrimination against men in general. This literally proves, proves it. And it's not even a man that's resulted in it either. A woman has found that men face gender or discrimination based on the fact that they're men. Anyway, what do you guys think? Should that man be facing jail for uh, criticising the woman who sent his son to his death? I personally don't. I think he should be let off of all charges. It's slate wiped clean. And the fact that this, not this second story shows we need to do more to help men when it comes to the fact that they're single fathers. Most people don't realise that being a, being a single father is hard enough, yet the fact that your wife walked out on you, you lost your job and you lost your home and now you can't get anywhere to stay because people view you as a hopeless individual and that, that you can't exactly raise kids and that obviously women should be the caretakers. Yeah, that's bad, but you don't fix this by people such as now the National Organisation for Women denying uh, uh, blocking bills that put that get put forward that offer shared parenting. Shared parenting, in my opinion, should be the default. It should be, unless there's actual evidence of violence, not he assaulted me, so I'm scared for my kids, get an injunction that way, unless there's clear-cut evidence of assault and abuse, there should not be any indication that 50-50 shared parenting isn't the basis that you should go on. But anyway, let me guys know what you think. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I will speak to you all in the and no, I will see you all in the next video. 
Bye for now. Remember guys, if you like what I do, remember to hit that subscribe, like buttons, and consider supporting me on Patreon or buying some merch from my Public store. Links to those will be in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.